Hello and welcome to the first Commander's Log for John Harper, author of the official Elite Dangerous novel and Hear the Wheel. In this pilot's log, I'll be broadcasting novel news, discussing Elite Dangerous gossip, and taking Anne Hear the Wheel to the galaxy to answer supporter questions. So first up, I just wanted to share a, a moment with you guys. I've reached an important milestone in the writing. I've reached the midpoint, and this is quite an exciting part of the story. I've referred to this point many times as the midpoint contextual shift and the first part of that obviously makes a lot of sense probably to everyone. What happens at the midpoint is the context of what's going on for the protagonist changes. What this means is before the midpoint of the story they're reacting to events around them, they're trying to sort things out, just trying to keep their head above water, dealing to the problems that they see around them. Once the context shifts and they fully understand exactly what's happening and exactly what they have to do complete their goals, complete their mission, then suddenly they're not just reacting to events anymore, now they're taking charge, now they're going on the offensive, now they're responding, they're not just reacting anymore. So this is quite an exciting point for Robert Gary, the hero. He's been running around in circles trying to figure things out, nothing's really working, now he knows exactly what has to happen, and now he goes off and he starts doing it. This is where the novel really gets quite exciting, and I'm quite looking forward to writing this part. This is the part of the story where my outline isn't quite as detailed as it should be. I had a pretty detailed back half of the story but then after my discussions with Frontier Developments had to change some pretty big points in the story and didn't go back with the same level of detail that I should have in my outline. So it's a bit thinner, the basic information's here and I'll have to fill it in so that means my the amount of words per day I managed to crack out might be a bit less because I spend more time figuring it out more than just writing but it's going to be a pretty exciting part and I think I'll be able to keep up the pace anyway. Secondly, I'd like to talk about the audiobook concept I've been mulling about for a little bit. I think this is quite an exciting way to add value to the, the fans. Some people like to read, some people like to listen to audiobooks as they drive or when they lie in bed. But I think it's a way that I can get the story to a big an audience. So I've been looking at how I can do this, obviously not uh, professionally. I didn't reach my stretch goals for the audiobook at all. But I can do this with my own voice and some other voices try and find an appropriate place to record and put a bit of effort into it and get something that's semi-decent out of it. Obviously, writing the story takes priority. I have to get this polished and perfected before March 2014. Any time I have left before then to work on the audiobook, I will. But chances are this will be a project that's completed after the main launch of the story and the game. Now, there's been a bit of discussion on the, uh, the Larve Radio on the Design Decision Forum about how the ship's and the weapons, potential components that can be plugged in and off of ships will interact and how they will equivalate it in the game and how you will counteract them if you're trying to destroy a ship or what weapons you have to use to make sure you can lower the shields and then disable the ship or blow a hole in it to get the cargo out. And Ellen and I talked about this quite a bit in my interview with, with him for the Larve Radio. Not a big fan of a big set of potential weapons or you know, lists of equipment that you have to figure out which is the best to make get your optimal ship. I like the idea of having a small amount of weapons, a small amount of shields, you know, different types that cost more and more money because they're better, so that you earn the money, you earn the ranking, you earn the privilege to buy or earn these weapons or shields so that you have a sense of accomplishment to get them and they make you better ship, a better fighter. But they're not so many of them not so convoluted that it makes it it detracts from the actual gameplay itself. There was in Frontier and First Encounters, you had your pulse weapons, your beam weapons, your plasma accelerators, and you chuck in a few kinetic weapons in there, which I think are a really bad idea in the vacuum of space, by the way. And a few other options, perhaps the ion cannons of Star Wars lore, a few things here and there, but you don't want to crowd it with a million iterations of the same things. I think that's going to detract from the actual gameplay. Another example of added complication is the new Elite Ranking. I, I like the idea of changing things and updating it and bringing it up to the 21st century or the 34th century, shall we say. But I worry the permutations of this new proposed system will detract from the gameplay for the player. But maybe I'm just being simple-minded. Okay, finally, I want to talk about questions that fans have on Anti the Wheel. So I might jump in my trusty old code mark 3 and hit the black and see what I can find. Departure clearance granted. Centering hyperspace in three, two, one.
Approaching the planet lane. Okay, here we are in Astoria, the capital of Lave, and I've already found someone who would like to ask a question. Hello, I'm Ben Peck, a far less prolific writer of frontier elite universe fiction than John Harper. My question is this, how do you know how much to tranquilise the children on a regular basis so you can get writing done? Well, Ben, it's a bit of a trick, really. Combination of drugs? No, not really. It's a late night thing, writing. Kids are asleep, wife's asleep, that's when I crack out the computer and manage to get a bit of writing done. You have to be a bit clever, you have to do it on lunch breaks, on the way to work you can, a little 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there. You've really got to want it, you've got to make it your priority. Doing a thousand words a day is a minimum, getting it done no matter how late it is, even getting up before falling asleep, getting the kids to sleep, making sure it's done. But it can be really hard doing a thousand words a day, there's sometimes you just want to go to bed, you've had a big day at work, all you want to do is get horizontal and crash. But no, if you set yourself that goal of 1,000 words a day, realising you've got over 100 people that have paid you money, depending on you to finish this book. If you don't finish it, you're in deep trouble. It's actually quite motivating. You get up and you do those 1,000 words, you get it done. And if it's late, just type faster. There was, there was one night I had to wait until midnight before I could do my writing. Desperate for sleep, I managed to get 1,000 words done in about 30 odd minutes. They weren't the prettiest words I've ever written, but they were a good skeleton for the story. I like to do a draft zero, I call it, instead of a first draft. It puts the whole structure of the book into play, so I have something to edit. Can't edit if you don't have a draft, so I just work hard, work fast, get a basic story written out, and then I can dress it up, make it nice, polish it later, get the words done first, worry about finesse later. So Ben, in answer to your question, the youngest likes his little milk bottles, and the eldest likes snuggle cuddles. Not sure if those classify as drugs, but they seem to be getting the job done at the moment. Hope that answers your question. Hit us back with another one when you're ready. Okay, well I don't want to make these pilot logs too long, so I think we'll cut it there. Have some more questions next time. If you do have any questions for the novel and hear the wheel, or for myself, please email them through or hit me up on the, the website, www.andhearthewheel.co.nz or at andhearthewheel on Twitter. Thanks and talk to you next time.